Hello, everybody. I'm back. Um, so I can stay ahead of lectures this week. Um, and I hope all of you can stay healthy leading up to finals. Um, I know there's some bugs going around, so uh, we're in the final home stretch, it seems like. And so if everyone stays healthy. We can just finish this last little sprint and finish this neural block well. Um, and so I've got another video for you. This is the lectures for November 27th, going over the cerebellum reticular formation, um, as well as the um, neuroradiology. Although I just want to preface this video, I can't find any neuroradiology within Anki. If you find it, please let me know. I'd be happy to include it in my next video. Um, give a shout out to you for credit. Uh, I just just too late for me today and I can't find it. I'm not searching it. I don't think there's any. But um, if you find it, let me know. Or if you make a card deck, an image occlusion deck out of um, Dr. Clark's images from that PowerPoint and would like to share it with me, at least um, put on the Discord or something, please let me know. I'd be happy just to include that in my deck to learn the anatomy as well as the patients. That'd be great. Um, I'm sure others would appreciate it as well. Um, but let's just jump right into it. Um, so this video is pretty short. You're just going to jump into first state of step one, jump down to neuro and special senses, into anatomy and physiology, and we're going to jump down to 11 neurotransmitters. Um, and so you can just um, select all, activate all. These are all really good cards. Um, there's not a lot in all these little sections. Um, I just want to go over a couple things um, in case you missed it. So depression is all involved with serotonin um, as well as norepinephrine. And then it wasn't quite clear if it's involved with um, like dopamine, if dopamine affects mental health with depression. Um, it has it in here. It wasn't quite clear in this slide. So I don't know if it's just that I'm exhausted, but I activated these cards because they are helpful to know. Um, for board prep, um, even if he might not have said it, I know he, Dr. El Salanti likes to simplify things just for our knowledge that we need to have for test um, and general board prep versus what is uh, true in the literature. Um, but I activated everything here. So if it's easy, it's not a lot of cards. I activated all of it. Um, so that is it uh, for 11. For 20, I'm just going to go through all these um, again. So cerebellar circuitry, you now want to activate all of those. All of these are really good ones, especially in here going over what activates what um, with the cerebellar input. Of. But cerebellar lesions, I didn't like most of these cards. Um, it was just like a personal preference thing. Um, because he mentioned that lesions in the lateral side will have little to no effect. And these cards are saying opposite. So I just didn't feel great about activating those. And I might just study that uh, PowerPoint um, be working on a whiteboard, answering practice questions in addition to these three cards I've activated. So the fourth one and these last two. And these last two are kind of including CMNR as well with the Romberg sign. Um, and then, you know, if there's a cerebellar lesion or a dorsal column lesion, um, and then this one is just um, addressing the laterality of a cerebellar lesion um, with kind of what side is going to be affected. So typically cerebellum lesions are ipsilateral symptoms manifestation. Um, and then we're going to jump to gross anatomy and physiology. Grab all of this. It's all really great. Histology should all be activated now. I think the only ones I was missing was the, these first three, so I picked them up. Um, six layer neocortex. Yeah. I didn't find these two. Like these are just very nitty gritty details. These two here. I don't think we really have to know that detail of where those fibers come from. If that's something that I point flew over my head, please let me know leave a comment um and i'll that'll be for everyone else to see um but that, otherwise that is it for 20 down off to 29 in the brain stem this should all be activated here this should all be activated here um nothing changed here this was the last video reticular formation activate all of it and that's it
really this is the only new section. I just want to go through that's this again. Um, and then here's this rules of four in case you missed it from I think yesterday. I created it. So I'm just included the picture. Um, or now it's somewhere else, I think. I just I need to be go to bed for tonight. Jeez. Um, and then you can stop the video now if you want. Or if you want to include cards for the special brain lesions that he mentioned at the very end of the video that are not on the test for the final, but they are high yield for our um, board exams. I'll show you where to find some cards there. Um, so there aren't any cards, just on general ataxia. You just have to know that ataxia is a loss of motor movement. Um, and so, or impaired, like, motor coordination at least. So just knowing that you can kind of assume depending on where that lesion is and what that area is responsible for, you can tell what's been affected. Um, otherwise you can jump down to the pathology section within the neuro and special senses. So pathology, you can go down to Frederick ataxia. And I just want to, I'm keeping these cards very limited. I mean, when it comes to board prep, I might activate all these. For now, it's just light details. So the first one, the third one, and then come down and grab this card here. The mutation of the for taxon gene is Frederick attacks at least impairment of the mind, at least to impairment of mitochondrial function. Just a general sense that mitochondria are affected. Um, it gets all these other cards get really into the nitty gritty of um, how those mitochondrial are affected, um, with proteins affects, if how it's inherited genetically, so on. like it goes down a hole that I don't think we should know. Um, and then the Wallenberg, you can just search that up here in the top like this, because you, I would recommend activating the third and the fourth card. These ones are just key that if your posterior inferior cerebellar artery is affected, it's going to cause this Wallenberg syndrome. And then come down and or actually, no, this one should already be activated. So I just grab these two here. Just keep it simple, just light details to keep it fresh. That, like and to remember what that Wallenberg syndrome is a thing. Um, and then as for the spinocerebellar ataxia, the SCA, the SCA, um, it's not in here. So maybe you just don't worry about that one yet. Um, and that will be something to come with for board prep um, next year when we have dedicated time. Um, but otherwise, that is it for this video. Um, the last thing I wanted to touch on was um, if you would all find it helpful if I did a video recording myself teaching the back whiteboard there, um, uh, sacral um, OMM diagnosis and the pentagons. Um, I, I missed last week, but I was taught it's by someone else who is not a faculty member, and I found it to be very helpful, uh, and I think I get it. So if you would all find that helpful, I can make an OMM video for that, if that'd be helpful, and switch it up from this anatomy. Um, otherwise, that is it for this video, and best of luck studying.